Today, we are going to be talking about the Logan Mwangi case. I mean, no disrespect to the family, and everything in this video is all public information available on the internet and multiple documentaries. I will link all my sources in the description box down below. Anne Howard Williamson was born on March 16th, 1991 in Essex. She was born into a pretty comfortable life as her parents were City of London stockbrokers, and she had attended private primary school before moving on to a public school until she was 16. She achieved 12 GCSEs before enrolling at a college in Southend to a filmmaking course. She moved out of her mum's house as a teenager, but she began to get herself into trouble with the law. The first time she was caught spending money on her mother's car without permission, and again for taking her mother's car on an illegal joyride. Although she had some trouble in her teenage years, she ended up securing a job as the manager at Carphone Warehouse in Brentwood, Essex. However, by June 2015, she fell pregnant. A day before her 25th birthday, on March 15, 2016, she gave birth to a little boy she named Logan. However, the birth was not without its complications, as Anne Harrod was apoplectic and she suffered multiple seizures. After giving birth to Logan, she moved to a town called Bridgend in South Wales, so she could get support from her family, in particular her mum, Claire Williamson. Not long after Anne Harrod met a soldier based at the nearby army barracks at her part-time job at the local post office. They ended up getting married, but it didn't last long, and the marriage eventually broke down. Anne Harrod started to enjoy her time as a single mum, as she would work together with her mum Claire to raise Logan and even describe Logan's grandmother as being a second mum to him. She was so proud of her little boy and took pictures of him every day. However, things began to take a turn for the worse when she moved out of her mum's house into a two-bedroom flat that was provided by the council in January 2019. The first few months went really well, but in April 2019, Anne Harrod met a man called John Cole in the railway pub in the town centre when she went out for the night. He was six foot four, 15 stone, and Anne Harrod found him very charming. They slept together that night and ended up staying together, becoming a couple as she really wanted her fairy tale family. John Cole became the stepdad for Logan, along with another boy he was already the stepfather to, 12 year old Craig Mulligan, whose father was absent most of his life and died in a car crash in 2012. John ended up moving in with Angharad and Logan pretty quickly, and unfortunately, it didn't take long for John to start mistreating Logan, which Ang Harrod eventually began to do so also. The first red flag for Ang Harrod's mother, Claire, was when her daughter was in hospital and she was looking after Logan for the time being. Claire brought the then two-year-old Logan to see his mum and John would flat out refuse them for going in to see her and saying that they shouldn't disturb her. John Cole had ties to the National Front which is a far-right fascist party in the UK, which has very racist views. It became evident that John had a distaste for Logan as he was a mixed-race child due to his dad, Ben Mwangi, being of Kenyan descent. John had a nickname for Logan, Coco Pop. In 2019, the couple became friends with someone called Jodie Simmons, who saw how they used to treat Logan as she would go to their place regularly. When Logan was only three or four years old, she went around to the flat and Logan was on the floor in the push-up position. His arms looked strained and his nose was snotty from where he had been crying. When Logan couldn't hold the position anymore, John had made him do it again and restarted the timer. Logan would do so without complaining or fighting back. Jody spoke to John about it being cruel as he is only a little boy and she was met with a cold shoulder. John would say that he was naughty and he had to learn. Instead, Jodie went to speak to Ang Harrod about how John was punishing Logan. She was in the back garden smoking a cigarette and agreed with John saying Logan needed to learn his lesson. In August 2020, Ang Harrod took Logan to the hospital as he had suffered what she claimed to be a dislocated arm, but was actually a fractured humerus which is the bone that connects the shoulder and the top of the arm. When Ang Harrod was questioned by officers about what happened, 
She explained that she had tried to pop his arm back in after it had dislocated, and then she sent him to bed with some cowpole. The next day, it still didn't look right, so she took him to the hospital. She was adamant she did what she thought was right in that situation. Months later, in January 2021, Ang Harrod actually called the police herself and said that John's stepson, Craig, had pushed Logan down the stairs and it was actually John that had tried to pop Logan's arm back in and she lied to protect him. In another incident after all of this, Logan was rushed to hospital again with a nasty burn on his neck, with Ang Harrod claiming it was the hot bath tap. It later emerged that she held a hot spoon to his neck because he was being annoying. In March 2021, Logan was placed on the child protection register due to concerns about John and Ang Harrod, as you can imagine. Social workers were expected to visit the family every 10 days to assess and offer any support to the family that they felt they needed. Miss Rush was assigned to the task and recalls that during her unscheduled visits to the property that it was always clean, Logan was always well presented and had plenty of toys. Ang Harrod seemed to adore Logan on every visit. Miss Rush found John Cole intimidating at first, but over time the relationship between her and the couple improved. In June 2021, Logan was placed on a child in need plan for children who are not deemed at risk but have complex needs and need support to help their development. Around the same time, John and Ang Harrod were going through the child courts to become the legal guardians of now 14-year-old Craig Mulligan, which they were awarded. In the last week of July 2021, Logan had tested positive for COVID-19 and the family isolated him to his room behind a barred gate with the curtains closed. He was prevented from interacting with the family, and when food was brought to his room, he was forced to look away and face the wall. Craig Mulligan officially moved in with the family on the 26th of July, 2021. The plan was for Craig and Logan to share a room for the time being until they could find a bigger place where all four of them could move into. On July 27th, John Cole FaceTimed a friend who saw Logan sat on the stairs colouring numbers where he seemed joyful and happy. This was the last time anyone outside of Ang Harrod, John Cole and Craig Mulligan saw Logan alive. Around 3pm on July 29th, Ang Harrod and Craig had an altercation which spilled outside of the property. Ang Harrod was hysterical and Craig was desperately trying to convince her to come back inside the house. At 1.45pm on July 30th, Craig Mulligan's social worker had arrived to the property but was refused entry under the ruse of Logan's COVID-19 diagnosis. She remained outside and spoke to both John and Ang Harrod for about 20 minutes, speaking about benefits before leaving. She saw Craig briefly but he told her to get lost. Later that evening, John Cole claimed he assaulted Logan by clipping him on the back of the head because he refused to have a bath as he was scared of water. He also threw him on the bed and said Ang Harrod grabbed Logan by the collar of his pyjama top and shouted, stop lying in anger. 5am on the morning of July 31st, a neighbour called 999 saying she was woken up by the sound of bickering. She heard a woman shouting, what have you done with my son? Where is my son? I want my son. She also heard a male shouting, I have done nothing with your son. At 5.46am the same morning, another emergency call was made to the police, but this time it was by Ang Harrod. She reported Logan missing, and in the call she appears distraught and hysterical. She claimed to have woken up and Logan was missing from his bed and she couldn't find him in the house. The back gate had been left open and she even tried to blame Craig Mulligan's mother saying she'd kidnapped Logan because they got custody of Craig. Craig, please, please, please help anything? me, please. Where are you? My son, I'm not here, I'm not here. Help take me, a breath, please. take a breath, because I can't understand when you're crying. Where are you? Five, lower lamps and Freddy the star, and I, I, 
<laughs> Lower what, sorry? Lower Lansom threading song, send somebody who's not here. Okay, who's not there? My son, he's alive, he's not here. Okay, take a breath. When did you see him last? I sat him in the bed last night and I just got up for my son and he's the other one's not here. Logan! Okay, take a breath. He's fine and he's gone. Can you see it? Logan! Logan! Logan. I, need, I need you to speak to me, not just shout. I know it's really full on and it's really scary. What's his name? What's his name? Is his name Logan? Logan, Logan Williams. Okay. And he's five, no is he five, did you say? He's five, please. Okay. Tell me what he looks like, please. He's a little mixed race boy. He's just got his fighting pajamas on. Multiple police officers attended Angharad property and a search was carried out to find Logan. PC Lauren Keane was one of the officers tasked with finding Logan and began her search around 5.55am, only 10 minutes after Angharad reported him missing. She was checking a hedge with her colleague when she spotted a body of a child in the river Ogmore. She turned a body cam on and jumped into the river. She reached the boulders at the bank and saw Logan. She recounts that morning. Logan was laying on his right side in an open fetal position. He was submerged under the water. I went into the water, took three strides to get to where he was, picked him up in my arms and took him up to where my colleague was. I wasn't able to see his face initially until I picked him up. I could see he had an injury to the left side of his face. His eyes were open, his body was stiff, his lips were blue. Immediately, I formed the opinion that Logan was deceased. Logan was found in a spider pyjama top and dinosaur pyjama bottoms. Paramedics attended the scene to treat Logan, but it was too late. He was profoundly hypothermic, with a temperature of 20.1 degrees Celsius and showed no signs of life. He was taken to the Princess of Wales Hospital in Bridgend, but despite the efforts of emergency services, Logan Mwangi was pronounced dead at 7.15am on July 31st, 2021. It was revealed that Logan had suffered extensive injuries to his internal organs and his brain. The injuries were so extreme, they considered to be consistent with a fall from a great height or a high-speed car crash. He had injuries to his abdomen, consisting of a lacerated liver, a tear to the bowel, and an injury to his small intestine. He also suffered considerable bruising to his scalp and the back of his head. His brain had significant trauma. There was hemorrhaging to the right side of his head and inside the skull. Logan had sustained 56 bruises, cuts, and abrasions to his body, including a visible cut to his forehead. The injuries were all consistent with a forceful assault. There was no evidence of drowning, so it was clear that Logan was dead before he was put in the river. There was evidence of healing in some of the injuries, which suggested there was a period of several hours between the point of injuries and Logan's death. Injuries to the brain were believed to have been caused 36 to 48 hours before his death, and it was also found that he had a fractured collarbone which had been left untreated for several weeks with parts of the bone not quite knitted together. Ang Harrod and John would have been completely aware that Logan was seriously ill after sustaining all of these injuries and he would have been in significant pain. If he was conscious, he would have been visibly distressed. Logan would have likely survived hours rather than days and if he got the right medical assistance, he had an 80% chance of survival. Throughout the search for Logan, Ang Harrod, John and Craig gave nothing away and appeared genuinely concerned for him while hoping he would return home safe and sound. Logan! This was later found to be an elaborate performance. While police were at the property, the sound of a tumble dryer could be heard, 
It contained items such as Logan's bed linen, which had been washed to remove any incriminating evidence. Why am I allowed to see my own biological son? I'm hurt. Look. He is unconscious. Listen, Why is I'm he not, unconscious? Listen, listen, I don't know. I don't know. Right now, the best thing. All I'm getting is answers like this. Why is no one telling me what's going on? I don't on? know. <laughs> I do. I'm not saying it's not reasonable. I'm if not. he is unconscious, he needs me. He needs he warm needs clothes. He needs mum. He They've needs his look. It's okay. <laughs> I feel so useless, though. When Anne Harrod was told of Logan's death, she began wailing and suffered a seizure which caused her to collapse. John appeared silent and assisted Anne Harrod following her collapse. Craig was on his Xbox playing Call of Duty. When Anne Harrod attended the hospital to see Logan's body, she told a nurse, I wish I taught him how to swim. She also questioned the nurse about why he was wet and when she was told he was found in the river, she made it clear that she was unaware of that. She appeared to be performing and only giving attention to Logan's body when people were watching. Logan's grandmother Claire also attended the hospital and said Ang Harrod was acting very strangely. She kept tucking him in with blankets, worrying that he was cold and talking about his funeral. Speaking to police officers at the hospital, Ang Harrod said that they should arrest her because she couldn't keep him safe. One officer said that although she was wailing a lot and making noises of crying or sobbing, there were little to no tears during that time. After she spoke to the police, nurses described that there was a change in Ang Harrod and she became aggressive and had a nasty streak about her. She also made a point of kissing Logan on the head but only when hospital staff were around. On the day Logan was found, family and friends observed Ang Harrod, John and Craig as acting really strange. On August 1st, Claire visited the property and Ang Harrod told her not to be surprised if her and John were arrested. When she questioned her daughter about it, she admitted that it had happened whilst Logan was in their care. When discussing Logan in the kitchen, Craig stormed into the kitchen frustrated and said, for God's sake, he's dead. A friend who visited with her partner also said that Ang Harrod told her that she missed punishing Logan and telling him to stand in the corner. John was also heaving a lot as if he was going to be sick, but Craig was celebrating and walking around being really happy. That evening, John Cole FaceTimed a friend and asked him if he had seen the news about a five-year-old boy drowning in the river at Bridge End and told him it was Logan. John burst into tears and said, I brought him up since he was a baby. What was I supposed to do? His friend presumed he was talking about Logan, but he was actually talking about his other stepson, Craig Mulligan. A CCTV camera from a property in a nearby street overlooking Ang Harrod and John's property ended up being a key piece of evidence in working out what actually happened to Logan. At 2.43am on July 31st, it showed John and Craig leaving the house with John carrying an object which looked to be a white cross on his back. This was Logan's lifeless body. They were seen walking in the direction of Pandy Park, following the path along the river before dumping Logan's body in a spot near a sewage pipe and a railway bridge. After they had left the house, the light in Logan's bedroom could be seen being switched on and off numerous times by Ang Harrod. John and Craig returned to the property at 2.51 a.m. and left again at 3.16 to dispose of Logan's ripped dinosaur pyjama top in the woodland
before going home at 3.27 a.m. When officers searched the property, Logan's Paw Patrol pillow, a duvet and a mattress protector were recovered from his bedroom and were found to contain small patches of blood staining, which matched Logan. On the night his body was dumped, there was activity on Angharad's Samsung phone, including the watching of YouTube videos related to Dr. Pimple Popper, makeup, BMWs, conjoined sisters, pain management, and the cleaning of a big long toenail. The phone had also accessed the Barclays banking app and the dialer application. These findings contradicted her story that she was asleep when Logan was removed and dumped. Analysis of her phone prior to July 30th showed a pattern of YouTube videos related to pimple popping or nature watched more than 300 times. However, in the days prior to Logan's death, she watched the following YouTube videos. Kidnapped four-year-old Rebecca Lewis reunited with her family. Family speaks after Utah babysitter is sentenced to prison for shaking baby. Missing toddler just clung to me. After Logan was found, she made several searches on Google for news articles using the search term five-year-old dead Bridge End. She read an article on ITV about Logan being found, as well as Sky News and The Guardian. August 1st, 2021, at 6pm, Ang Harrod Williamson, John Cole and Craig Mulligan were all arrested under the suspicion of Logan Mwangi's murder. Ang Harrod broke down and started wailing. Why am I getting arrested? Right, do you want to have a sit down with Adam and then Claire? Right, have a sit down by you, Anna. And have a sit again. by you now. Sit down on the. Oh, I'm not doing anything wrong. Right. 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 Do you want to have a sit down by there, Anna? Right? Don't want you falling down, right? Have a sit down by there, okay? Okay. okay. Right. You're in your ass on suspicion of me. Is that okay? So you do not, you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention one question, something which relates to the court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Necessity for the arrest, okay, is to prevent loss of property, to allow a prompt and effective investigation, and to um, protect vulnerable persons and children, okay? So we get social services. Okay? Don't take my children no. Okay, it's as part of the investigation. Oh, I haven't okay. done anything okay. wrong! Okay. Where is Logan? Where is Logan? He's still, he's still with us in the morning. He's still, he's still in the hospital with doctors. What happened to him? Can't explain anything further at the moment. Why is nobody talking to me? You're supposed to be helping find out what happened, not arresting me when I'm telling you my son. Okay. What is yes. wrong with you guys? You're supposed to be helping me. I'm had, I understand you're upset. I understand. Is your son dead? Is your son being okay, found in a river? I'm okay, I'm Harrod. We, we understand you're very upset. We've gone investigating. I'm very upset. Really. I've just lost I my understand. son. You've taken my life. The for the murder of Logan Mwangi began at Cardiff Crown Court on February 21st, 2022. The prosecution opened saying Logan was murdered and each of the defendants played their part in the killing of the five-year-old child who would not have stood a chance against any of the defendants, let alone all three. The prosecution says that having killed Logan behind closed doors in the family home in Bridgend, each of the defendants played their part in a cover-up of the true circumstances of his death. Each was desperate to cover up their involvement in his killing and prioritise their own self-preservation over everything else, and particularly the needs of Logan. After two months of evidence, the trial concluded on April 21st, 2022, when John Cole, Craig Mulligan and Ang Harrod Williamson were all found guilty of Logan's murder. Upon hearing the verdicts, Ang Harrod gasped and collapsed to the floor. At the end of the hearing, she was held back by a dock officer as she shouted at John Cole, calling him a lying murderer. Her two co-defendants remained emotionless 
as the verdicts were returned. Ang Harrod Williamson and Craig Mulligan were also found guilty of perversing the course of justice. John Cole had already pleaded guilty to this particular charge ahead of the trial. Craig Mulligan was given a 15-year sentence. John Cole must serve a minimum of 29 years in prison, whilst Logan's mother, Ang Harrod Williamson, will serve at least 28 years. Logan was the most beautiful, was the most beautiful boy whose life was tragically had been tragically cut short. The world is a colder and darker place without his smile and happy energy in which he lived his life. The hole that has been left in the hearts of all those of all who knew and loved him will never be filled. No amount of time can heal the wounds that have been inflicted. The wonderful memories I have of my son will never be tarnished. They will forever be in my heart and soul. I loved him so much and somehow I have to live my life knowing that I will never get to see him grow up to the wonderful man I knew that he could be. I would like to thank the South Wales Police and the prosecution team who have worked tirelessly to bring those responsible for my son's murder to court. From all of us, thank you for doing an amazing job and getting justice for my son. That's all we have for this case today and it was a sad one. One that definitely could have been prevented. If there are any cases you would like me to look into, let me know in the comments, and it could be my next one. If you would like to read more true crime stories, follow the link to my blog in the description, where I look at a different case every week.